From the Suwannapum era through the Ratanakosin era, Thai people have had to fight many wars to protect and preserve their independence. Their ancestors used their wisdom and bravery to battle with weaponry in order to protect the nation. Grabi Grabong constitutes the preliminary foundation of Thai martial arts, which the ancient Thais adapted from the battle choreographies of close contact fighting, which were documented in the ancient treatise on war known as Tamra Pichai Songkram. Grabi Grabong was usually learned and practiced during times of peace, only to then be used against invaders in times of war. The weapons and protective equipment made from wood, rattan or wicker palm, metal and leather were designed to resemble the authentic versions that would see service in war. Grabi Grabong was invented as a sport where practice opponents were set up in pairs and made to fight as though they were in a real-life war situation. Grabi Grabong was continuously developed until the early Ratanakosin era, when proper training systems were established. In the Ratanakosin era, soldiers would practice with their weapons at a field known as Sanam Chai, where the Thai kings would observe the training from Sutai Sawan Prasat Throne Hall or Pla Pla Sung in the Grand Palace. In the early Ratanakosin period, the kings, as well as all people of royal blood, had to learn Grabi Grabong. From that time on, the sport became popular throughout the entire kingdom. From the reign of King Rama I to King Rama VI, the sport remained under the patronage of the royal court. Some well-known teachers of the time include Kun Yisan Sapayagon and Lung Visan Darungon. During the reigns of King Rama VII and King Rama VIII, Grabi Gurbong faced a reduction in popularity. When this happened, the task of upholding the sport fell upon the schools with an established martial arts curriculum. Well-known teachers of the time were Kru Nak Tep Hasadin Na Ayutea, Kru Charun Trirat, Krun Si and Krun Chid. Training in Grabi Grabong is organized into four levels. Before they start learning, students must perform a Yok Kru ritual in order to show their respect and their willingness to be students of the teachers. This is one of the graceful traditions of Thailand which is still respected today. The teacher then accepts the students and instructs them with love and kindness as if they were his own children. The students of Grabi Grabong are called Luk Sid. In Thai, Luk means child and Sid means student. Mental and emotional training is the next step of intense character building. The student comes to attain the warrior-like qualities of moral courage and endurance, as well as developing coping mechanisms in the face of any type of danger. Studying the theoretical aspects of Grabi Gurbong equips the student with a link to the sport's history and underlying principles. The student must learn to use this background information, as well as their own transformative wisdom, to lead the sport into future avenues of newness and originality. The last step allows the student to fully practice the sport by training them to become skilled warriors with speed and flexibility. แล้วกีฬาประเภทศิลปะการต่อสู้เนี่ยมันอยู่ในหลักการข้อแรกของการฝึกกระบี่กระบองหรือฝึกวิชาวุฒิเลยคือเรื่องของการบำรุงขวั
มีความตั้งใจในการทํางานต่างๆสําเร็จอย่างมากเพราะว่าตัวเองมีสมาธิและที่สำคัญคือขวัญและกําลังใจในการจะต่อสู้และผลพลอยได้ของมันก็คือความสามารถในการป้องกันตัวเองคือฝึกกระบี่ก็บอกแล้วไม่ใช่ว่าต้องใช้อีดาบอย่างเดียวเวลาเดินไปตามทางเจอคนรังแกอาจจะหยิบไม้มาท่อนหนึ่งอันนั้นก็เหมือนดาบหรือเหมือนไม้กระบองที่เราฝึกมาใช้ป้องกันตัวได้ทั้งหมดแล้วก็ยังใช้ป้องกันผู้อื่นได้อีกด้วยแล้วที่สําคัญก็คือในการฝึกฝึกกระบี่กระบองเนี่ยสิทธิ์ครูเดียวกันในสํานักหรือในโรงเรียนหรือชมรมเดียวกันเนี่ยถือว่าเป็นครอบครัวหนึ่งเป็นการฝึกให้รักกันมีประโยชน์ต่อส่วนรวมเป็นวิถีทางในการกล่อมกาวจิตใจหรือเป็นการกล่อมกาวทางสังคมสำหรับเด็กและเยาวชนอีกทางหนึ่ง The equipment involved in Grabi g r b o n g is organized into three categories: the sporting area, weapons, and musical instruments. The sporting area is generally flat and rectangular, like a piece of rolled-out fabric, eight meters in width and 16 meters in length. If located indoors, the ceiling should be at least three meters high. An indoor sporting area doesn't require any outer boundaries to mark the limits of the surface. The weapons of g r a b i g or Bong are modeled after real war weapons that have seen service in wars throughout Thai history. They are categorized into dance weaponry and fighting weaponry. The protection gear comes in the form of bucklers and shields. The dance weaponry is designed to place emphasis on the beauty and impressiveness of the gestures, and to keep their eyes on the opponent's manner. The fighting weaponry consists of imitation versions made from rattan or wicker palm and the roots of banyan trees. These instruments must be lightweight, firm in texture, and durable enough to stand up to repeated usage. The musical instruments used in the sport are known as pijava g l o n g k e k which consist of a Javanese oboe and Indian drums. The drum that plays the higher notes is the male drum, and the one playing the lower notes is the female drum. Along with the incorporation of shing, which are small cup-shaped cymbals, the music created becomes an exciting and inspirational orchestration. For the participants and the audience, the music also helps the performers to align with certain rhythms, priming them into a state of consciousness, which channels the warrior spirit. In ancient times, the code of dress of the performers was a sleeveless top imprinted with sacred writings and drawings. Which resembled a real warrior's uniform, and loose trousers which reached just below the knee. In later times, the performers wore either a short sleeve or sleeveless top, and a j o n g g r a b e n which is a piece of cloth that is rolled and tied up between their legs. Today, performers wear either short sleeve or sleeveless tops and knee-high trousers similar to shorts. The performers also wear amulets, which come in the form of metallic pieces, knots, necklaces, bracelets, and fabrics that either have sacred writings imprinted upon them or have undergone rituals involving spells and enchantments. The methodology of g r a b i g r b o n g is based upon a solid set of principles from beginning to end. So even though the art itself is taught by various teachers in different geological areas. The fundamental principles remain the same everywhere. The performance begins with paying respect to the teacher. The ritual is accompanied by a musical preface by the oboe and drums. The music briefly pauses upon completion of the ritual. After which the h o m r o n g or Thai overture is played.
At the end of the overture, the performers from both sides walk out onto the competition area with their dance weaponry and kneel confronting each other. With the playing of the oboes and drums again, the opponents begin their performance with a worshiping gesture. Then they perform the movement ritual of Prom Sina and start to dance. The accompanying music must be appropriate for the kind of weaponry being used in the choreography. Upon completion of the dance, the opponents come back to kneel in their former positions, and the music pauses again. The dance weaponry is then replaced by fighting weaponry. After that, another score of the oboes and drums begins to play, and the opponents perform quick worshiping gestures before walking towards each other in a rite of initial observation called derm playing. The opponents then return to their former positions. They both clasp their hands together before the fighting performance, and the music continues to play throughout the entire performance. Each fighting competition is specifically designed so that the opponents are performing in the spirit of fairness and sportsmanship. Measures are taken to ensure that one competitor doesn't have a distinct advantage over the other. The organization of opposing pairs is based upon the nature of the weaponry that is used. For instance, one using a saber is selected to fight an opponent who also uses a saber. And the same applies to those using double swords, bladed staffs, and staffs. On some occasions, opponents using contrasting sets of weaponry are selected to fight each other. This is only done in cases where there is no distinct advantage on either side. The performance normally begins with one opposing pair at a time. It is only towards the end that there is a shift to actual fighting competitions between opposing groups. สัดส่งออกไปจากกายและ 3 การใช้อาวุธมีคมในการทําสงครามเนี่ยก็สืบทอดมีอิทธิพลในการทําสงครามของเช่นเงาเนี่ยอาจจะต่างกันว่าเงาไทยเงาจีนเงายี่ปุ่นแต่ละฝึกเสื้อเงาเดียวเลยมันก็จะง่ายเราก็เลยจําลองอาวุธจ
which is roughly equivalent to one meter. The blade is made from palm. The entire length of it is knitted with small strings, to which rock varnish and golden leaves are applied. The handle is knitted with strings and leather and covered with velvet. The grip is made from varnished leather with a golden design. Some of the sabers used for dance are made from wood and adorned with pieces of colored mirror tiles that are arranged in patterns which can be seen all over the weapon. The saber dance or Ram Grabi begins with a worshipping gesture that is repeated three times. Then the opponents perform the movement ritual of either Prom Nang, which is performed standing up, or Prom Yun, which is performed kneeling on the ground. Then they start the dance. After the dance has ended, the performers adopt the position of Prom Nang or Prom Yun, followed by the initial rite of observing the opponent, known as Dern Plang. The saber that is used for fighting is designed much like the saber that is used for dance, except the knitted areas and the handle are entirely varnished with rock. The fighting sword can be used for both striking and stabbing. It is composed of a blade, a grip, a shield, and a sheath. The curved part of the fighting sword is closer to the tip than the dancing sword. It also becomes larger and wider towards mid-length with the full length being around 90 centimeters. In addition, the weight of the fighting sword is more concentrated than the dancing sword from mid-length to the tip for more efficiency in striking. The sword can be used in twin form with the sword held in each hand. It can also be used with shields such as a dang, a ken, or a lo. The sword for dance is shaped very much like an actual sword, except that it doesn't have a sharp point. It's normally made of varnished wood with golden designs. Some swords for dance are also decorated with pieces of colored mirror tiles. Others have a grip designed in the form of a dragon sculpture, which appears to be swallowing the sword. The colors vary according to personal taste. The dance of double swords begins with the worshipping gesture which is repeated three times, followed by the dance. Then the performers adopt the position of Prom Nang or Prom Yun, followed by the Dern Plang ritual. The fighting sword is shaped much like a dance sword, except that the fighting version is normally made from calamus palm, which is light and firm. The shield is made of leather. The blade and grip are securely knitted and varnished. The elongated shield or dong is made from a combination of leather, palm, and wood. It is rectangular in shape and curved like a banana tree leaf. A dong is 15 centimeters wide and about one meter long with a handle on the back. The round shield or ken is made from leather, woven palm, or metal. The middle curves outward just like a walk. There are two handles on the back, one for inserting the arm and another for holding the shield. Lo is made from leather. The front is normally gilded with various designs and there is a handle on the back. The dance of the sword and the dong, the ken, and the lo are similar to that of the double swords.
The general fighting choreography is composed of advancing with the sword and receiving the opponent's strikes with the shields. The bladed staff is a weapon that is used for striking and stabbing. It is composed of a blade, a shield, and a grip. The blade is made from quality metal, and it's shaped like a saber. It's smaller and shorter than a saber, and also a bit lighter than a sword. The shield of a bladed staff resembles that of a sword. It helps to defend against the bladed staff of the opponent while fighting. The grip is made of firm wood with a glutinous texture that is firmly attached to the blade. When the blade and the grip are joined, the bladed staff reaches a total length of about 220 centimeters. It is used for more distant contact, both on the ground and on the back of an elephant. The bladed staff is tied to a hook, which is simultaneously used to control the elephant. A bladed staff that is used for dance resembles an actual bladed staff, except that it is artistically composed and decorated, much like the sword used for dance. The bladed staff dance begins with a worshiping gesture that is repeated three times followed by the dance. Then the performers adopt the position of prom nang or prom yun, followed by the dern plang ritual. A bladed staff used for fighting is made from calamus palm and resembles the dance bladed staff. The blade is normally covered with a thick fabric or flannel in order to reduce pain upon contact. The staff is a weapon made from wood with a glutinous texture. It measures about 2 meters in length and the circumference of the staff is about 20 centimeters. A staff used for dance resembles an actual staff. It is made from the root of a banyan tree which makes the staff solid, light and durable. The staff dance begins with a worshipping gesture that is repeated three times, followed by the dance. Then the performers adopt the position of prom nang or prom yun, followed by the dern playing ritual. A fighting staff resembles a staff used for dance, except that it is inferior in quality. Both ends are covered with a thick fabric or flannel. Wood pieces attached to the arms serve as both weapons and shields. These weapons feature designs that are truly unique. They are normally made from banyan wood and shield the lower arm from the elbow down to the hand. They are rectangular about 7 centimeters wide and 45 centimeters long. The front is curved slightly outward. 
while the back has an elongated hollow section so that the arm can fit well. A hole is drilled so that a rope with the circumference of the little finger can pass through. Then a rope is tied through and made into a handle-like component which allows the hand to pass through the back of the wood piece. These wood pieces are worn over both of the lower arms and are used to fight against the staff. The dance of the wood pieces begins with the worshipping gesture that is repeated three times, followed by the dance. Then the performers adopt the position of prom nang or prom yun, followed by the dern playing ritual. Grabi Grabong has faithfully served both the Kingdom of Thailand and the Thai people. This ancient martial art has trained Thai soldiers throughout history to be equipped with a wide range of coping mechanisms in any battle situation. Grabi Grabong also constitutes a medium of fine arts, especially in the generation of dance gestures that have been incorporated into Thai classical dance. Also, the sport itself features a tradition of elaborately constructed principles that have been passed down through the generations. As a sport, Grabi Grabong has served as a tremendous method of exercise for people of all ages and genders. It can potentially uplift physical, mental, and emotional health, while also improving the efficiency of diverse organs and limbs. The art itself can also inspire many adaptations of self-defense methods that can be used in a number of unexpected situations. แต่เพื่อเป็นการเตรียมพร้อมที่จะรับมือกับข้าศึกสู้กับข้าศึกเนี่ยบรรพุรุษของเราท่านอาจารย์ฉลาดท่านอาจารย์วิธีการเพราะ
empirical data, and ancient wisdom concerning the sport. This must be done while those who are knowledgeable about the sport are still alive. Any knowledge that gets lost in this current generation could be devastating to the art of Grabi Grabong and the Kingdom of Thailand. It is surely the Thai people who have always been and continue to be the torchbearers of this magnificently treasured sport.